Alright, this is Max Cougar here, and I'm going to teach you guys, to my best ability, on how to teach you guys the Quake C language, which is basically just a coding language for Quake, which I've gotten a lot of requests on people wanting to code in Quake C, so I thought video tutorials would be the best. So let's jump, jump right into it. I've included four links in the bottom. Just If you want the PC version, get the PC version. If you want the PSP, get the PSP version doesn't really matter and then for the the most important part is to get the actually the actual quake C rare file okay once you get it and download it then extract it to wherever and open the file or the folder up you'll get something that looks a lot like this this is the source files the QC files this is where all the meat happens in quake in the game anyway so basically this this program right here it's a great program this is what I use personally and I think you guys should use it too because it's really great it's got a nice GUI and everything so open it up and you'll get something really similar to this you will get exactly this actually so let's start off with this the progs.src file this is the little file that lists all the the individual Quake C files that need to be compiled it needs to be compiled in this order. It goes down the line. It takes in defs.qc. This is it, this is how it evaluates. It evaluates defs.qc. This file right here goes down the line, compiles everything, takes all this stuff, and just compiles it. Then it goes down to the Frickbot code, then the next QC files, it just goes down the line. And that's how it compiles. So just remember that code goes from top to bottom. And if you do want to compile, see this little button right here, the compile button? You press it, and it compiles. You see there's a lot of different warnings in here, just ignore them. We'll fix them later, or you might get good enough at Quake C where you can fix them. I already fixed them in my own Quake C, but this is a fresh one so you can have warnings alright then if you click this little plus button right here a little a whole bunch of little things will drop down this is all your quake C files listed in the directory which is really cool because you don't have to keep going and open and click open or anything you just got them all right here <coughs> so I think I'm going to teach you guys first about the data structures and stuff so the three different types of data structures are hold on let me get you aren't gonna have this quake C file I just named it this for no apparent reason but basically if you want to define <coughs> a data structure there's three different there's actually four different kinds of them there's float a float it stores a number a number value like one or two or five except it has a floating point value like 1.00 or 2.13 or 2.335 etc <clears throat> so they just floats store numbers and then while I'm at it I might as well explain this comments these two little bars right here um, the compiler just completely ignores them they're not even there they're just for reading the code they're easy they're easier to read the code <coughs> so you can just put little comments and stuff stores a numerical value <coughs> then there's entity an entity is object in in the game it's object in the world which seems kind of confusing to envision right now but they're really important and they're really useful an object in the world they can do lots of different things <clears throat> then you got a string a string it it kind of looks like this with the two little the two little quotation marks and you put like text in there like hi that's what a string looks like right there <clears throat> it stores it stores like letter values stores letters strings then you got vector a vector it it's a place in the world it stores 
it stores an area, it stores an origin, a place in the world, and it kind of vectors look like this. <coughs> now, if you just applied that, that would put something in the zero, zero, zero part in a map. You know, the very middle of, of Worldcraft, the little middle where the X and Y axes meet. That's what a vector looks like. And that's what that vector did. Stores, stores a an origin, a and a place in the world. Very useful too. So those are the four different types of structures you might want to put. You can put um, if you put the little dot in front of it, that means it you can like tie it to something. You could tie it to an entity. <coughs> so. That's what the dots mean. If you put them in front, you can tie them to an entity. What's to say you didn't tie them to an entity or you just left them without a dot in front of them? That means they are going to be a global variable. Variable. So it doesn't just apply to one thing. It applies to everything. Everything in the world. <coughs> These may seem kind of confusing right now, but later on, you'll think they're a piece of cake. You'll be using them very frequently. I should open up reload.qc again. <clears throat> I think that's where I'm going to stop right now for this tutorial. So go to tutorial number two. This is Max Cougar. Peace out.